I want to talk about Soulsborne lore vs. and content creators in the Soulsborne community as a whole. But I want to start by saying I like Soulsborne lore. It's like the best parts of history class, learning about ancient Egypt and Rome, but in a fun, clunky Western fantasy role-playing game. I agree. I think FromSoft has admitted to not including exposition and only minimal story bits in their games. And that's because they didn't know how to, and they rely on these item descriptions to have the player piece things together for themselves. You are entirely right, and this creates a sought-after niche market for these pseudo-intellectuals that want to string together a narrative that is most likely relatively accurate, but they're definitely reaching and stabbing in the dark with what might have actually happened. And that's the beauty of it, is that we will never truly know what happened the lens between prior to the shattering. We will never get a cutscene that explains the scourge of the beast spread in Bloodborne. There is no explanation on how Lothwick fell apart in Dark Souls 3, or how the fire started to fade in Dark Souls 1. Sorry, Dark Souls 2. You're still my favorite, but they don't need to know that. You know, you say all that, and you sound like you could be a great Soulsborne content creator. Like, I am totally jealous of you, Morgan. I do not have a silky voice that sounds good on the ears. Like, if I fart out a lot of big words and speculation on Soulsborne games, I sound like a turbo nerd that's rambling too long in a Christmas party with something nobody gives a fuck about. I am totally jealous, because to sleep, I will, in fact, put on a Vati Vidya video or a Smoketown hour-long breakdown and let my mind wander and wish that I could do that. I mean, I would buttfuck the algorithm so hard that every Soulsborne character with an internet connection will see my face on their goddamn screen. I will admit that the voice does make a difference. I don't really know too much about these channels. What are these videos even like? Okay, you want to know about these channels? These channels will take a single tweet from FromSoft and make a 30-minute video on their own speculation about what that tweet actually means. I'm not even joking. Think about it. If I did that, realistically, if I wrote a script with that voice about a single tweet for 30 minutes, the algorithm would chew me up and spit me out. Bullshit, man. I don't think people realize the difference that voice quality makes when keeping an audience captivated when talking about Soulsborne games. You know, Joe, there's a channel out there that I did watch by the name of Redgrave, and he does fantastic videos on Bloodborne lore, and he has an accent similar to yours, Joe. His production value's very natural. He just sits in front of a computer and records himself discussing lore and the history of Bloodborne. I actually like this presentation because it feels just more natural, like I'm in the same room as him, and we're just talking about games. Hey, Jamie, pull up Redgrave's channel. Let's look at his views. Okay. Now, pull up Vati Vidya. Search for Bloodborne. Wow. Just wow. There is a huge difference in the metrics between these two channels. Like, just huge. You know, this gives me an idea. You've beaten Bloodborne, right, Morgan? Hell yeah. I platinumed it over Christmas break. Great game. I really like the Holy Moonlight Blade. It's so shiny, and it feels really good using those transformation attacks. For my build, I went for Arcane, then I used the Amygdala Arm and the Saw Spear. God, those weapons are so much fun. I want to try this. I'm going to try to summarize Bloodborne in my own words using fake item descriptions. And then, Jamie, you write down what I say, and then I'll give you a copy, Morgan. Then you just say the same summary that I made, but just in your voice. All right, sounds fun. Let's give it a whirl. Okay. Bloodborne is a fantastic game filled with lots of secrets and lore for the good hunter to uncover as they seek the pale blood sky to end the never-ending hunter's nightmare. After receiving blood ministration in Yarnum by a mysterious minister, we wake up in Iosefka's clinic next to a hand-scrawled note. Its description reads, Seek pale blood to transcend the hunt. Now, who wrote this note? Was it the player? The blood minister? Or was it Iosefka? Stepping outside of Iosefka's clinic, we explore the remains of a scourge-written city by the name of Yarnum. Riddled with dilapidated buildings and townsfolk who have been inflicted by a sort of disease. Yarnumites call you a cursed beast, they'll say it's all your fault and tell you to get away and they'll call you an outsider. It really leaves you wondering, what happened here? What happened to such a beautiful city with gothic architecture? That's the topic of today's video. Who is the hunter and what happened in the city of Yarnum?
Okay, I think that's about it. Jamie, did you get all that? You know, that was pretty good, Joe. Those are definitely the questions that I asked myself in my first playthrough. Thanks, man. I tried to have it feel more natural. No, you try it. All right, Jamie, hand in the script. All right, so just from the top, just read this off? Yeah, just read it. You don't have to make it sound all buttery. Just read what I wrote. Okay, here you go. Bloodborne is a fantastic game filled with lots of secrets and lore for the good hunter to uncover as they seek the pale blood sky to end the never-ending hunter's nightmare. After receiving blood ministration in Yarnum by a mysterious minister, we wake up in Iosefka's clinic next to a hand-scrawled note. Its description reads, Seek pale blood to transcend the hunt. Who wrote this note? Was it the player? The blood minister? Or was it Iosefka? Stepping outside the clinic, we explore the remains of a scourge-ridden city by the name of Yarnum. Yarnum is a town riddled with dilapidated buildings and townsfolk who have been inflicted by some sort of disease. They'll call you a cursed beast, say it's all your fault, and tell you to get away. They'll call you an outsider. It really leaves you wondering, what happened here? What happened to the people of such a beautiful city with gothic-style architecture and so many people in it? That is what we are going to explore in today's video. Who is the hunter? And what happened in the city of Yarnum? Wow. I'm ready to fall asleep, dude, but in a good way. It's not fucking fair, bro. I mean, I've got enough brain cells to rub together to figure out that the soft accent works over an American accent. I mean, you could literally be talking about pee-pee poo-poo farts, and the viewers would be going, Yes, Gwyn coveted the pee-pee poo-poo farts. That's why he hunted the dragons to extinction. Do you want me to say that? Do, do you want me to say it? Yeah, dude, go for it. Gwyn coveted the pee-pee poo-poo farts. That's why he hunted the dragons to extinction. Unfucking believable I mean, your voice is just perfect for this kind of stuff, man. I'm starting to think that you're right. I mean, this is a revelation for lore hunters like myself that we could be totally jumping down the wrong rabbit hole and taking what all these channels say for granted. What that also tells me is that I think that this leads to a lot of inconsistencies in the general interpretation of souls porn lore. Exactly. I mean, it's entirely possible that we are so captivated by the fantasy of these Soulsborne games that once you get the right pied paper, playing his little silky tune in your ear, you'll buy anything that they say. How about this, Joe? I'll help you. Point the camera at me. Jamie, cut the camera three. This is a PSA message to all Soulsborne content creators. Do a video in an American accent. Don't tell anyone. Just do it. Then take a look at your metrics and what your comments say. Do it. And then admit it that you're playing us. You are, dude. I see you. I can see you're trying to seduce me with your ASMR Blue Yeti mic, whispering about Queen Merica and Michaela. Don't lie to me, bro. You're a fraud and you get views and sell your art books because people fall asleep or put you as background noise while they're browsing Reddit for chalice extension cliffs. Was that good? Was that good, Joe? That was perfect, man. Hey, speaking of chalice dungeons, did you want a decent chalice dungeons? Yeah, I'm actually doing one right now. I'm in Thumerian Hill, Chalice, Layer 3. Uh, I'm ringing the beckoning bell now. Oh, I got you, bro. Let me just go over to the gravestone. I've got the flame sprayer plus 10 and lots of oil urns. We're just going to roast these fuckers. Yeah, I've got the church cannon. You keep them busy with the flame sprayer, and then I'll just blast them. Sounds like a plan, man. Hey, what's the password? Okay, let me check. Uh, come with three M's. Okay, C-U-M-M-M. -M -M. Okay, got it. All right, I'm searching now. And now, we wait. 